Hey guys, Josh with the Adept Tape channel, and in this video, we're going to be discussing do you need a torque wrench to build an engine? It doesn't have to be an engine, it could be a, a space station, a refrigerator, but I build engines, so we're going to discuss do you need a torque wrench to build them? And the answer is no. No, you do not need a torque wrench to build an engine. Lots of equipment, engines, whatever, get assembled all the time without a torque wrench, but the real question is, should you use a torque wrench? Now, the reason I'm making this video is the video where I was reacting to the Pakistani shop building that Nissan diesel engine where they did not use a torque wrench at all, and it made me nervous. Now, I'm not critiquing them. They can do it however they want. Those are experienced guys. They have totally different circumstances than I'm in, but I build engines here in the United States, and would I ever put an engine together without a torque wrench? Absolutely not, I would not. Now the reason why that is, is complicated. It's nuanced. So let's get into torque wrenches, bolts, and then we can discuss why you should and when it doesn't really matter, all right? So there's gonna be a lot of facts and physics involved in this discussion, but before that, this is my opinion. This is not a fact, what I'm going to say as far as when you should or shouldn't. Obviously I always follow your manufacturer's recommendation, but this is my opinion. So why don't you say what your opinion is in the comment section? No one has the same opinion on this topic, so it's gonna be a little different. Here's mine. Torquing bolts. We're talking about bolts here, really. And bolts hold just about everything together, whether it's a space station, an airplane, an engine, transmission, whatever. Of course, there are snap rings and adhesives and all sorts of other stuff, but predominantly we use fasteners and the predominant fastener is a bolt. Now, a bolt doesn't really have many parts. It's actually just one part, but there are parts to a bolt. There's the head, the shank, and then the threads. And then bolts, of course, are, there's different pitches, as they call them. There's metric and standard, and there's, this would be a fine thread bolt. There's coarse thread. And all of that determines what you should be torquing them to. So why do I think you need a torque wrench when assembling an engine? Well, Almost every part in an engine, especially the internal components, the connecting rods, the main bearings, uh, the cylinder head bolts, injector hold down bolts, rocker arm shep, bolts, the bolts that hold the gear train together, anything like that, typically there's going to be a standard torque for these bolts. Now, you should use those standard torques. And the reason for that is the fastener in that particular application is supposed to be torqued to that. And the reason it needs to be torqued to that is because the bolt does a specific job. Now bolts, when you torque them, actually stretch. They'll stretch slightly, and it depends on the grade of the bolt, how much you torque them to, fine thread, coarse thread, all that. As long, assuming you're using the correct bolt, when they stretch, you don't want them to stretch too little or else you will not be applying the same clamping force as torquing them to the proper torque. Now, if you, what if you over tighten them? Well, then you're stretching them too much. They can actually fail or fatigue. Now they might not fail initially. It might take several heat cycles or maybe they'll fail the next time that component gets removed and reinstalled. So it is important that you're torquing a fastener, especially internal engine components, because you don't want the bolts to be under or over torqued. And it also gives it uniformity. If you're doing a cylinder head, you may have 30 head bolts. You want them to all be even to apply the correct and even clamping force in sequence to hold the head gasket on. Or I should say keep it from failing because the head gasket, especially the fire rings in a head gasket, are exposed to the combustion gas pressures of the cylinder itself. So you don't want half the head bolts at 100 foot pounds and the other half at 200 foot pounds. It's gonna have uneven clamping force at that point. So that's why you should torque bolts, especially internal engine bolts when installing them. Now, are there any problems with just torquing the bolt and thinking it's good? Well, of course there are. If the threads are damaged on the bolt or in the bore that the bolt is going into, or if there's dirt in there, or if the threads are supposed to be lubricated and they're not lubricated when you install it. There's about 50 different reasons why when you install the bolt, it doesn't actually stretch the appropriate amount and retain the correct clamping force. And you may torque it but just because it's torque does not mean it's applying the correct clamping force. 
All of the other factors that I just discussed, the problems, will determine whether the bolt is over or under torqued. A torque wrench is very simple. This is probably the simplest type of torque wrench. This just has a beam and it tells you what's applied. It's not super accurate, but it's better than nothing. So when you torque a bolt, you're applying a specific torque to the head of the bolt, which is a turning force. That does not mean that the bolt is stretched the appropriate length though. Some bolts actually, you measure the stretch on them, some connecting rod bolts. It's quite rare though in the diesel field to do that. And remember, you're not determining the stretch when you torque it. You're determining the amount of torque applied to the head of the bolt. If there isn't a torque listed, you need to understand what the standard torque for the fastener is. And that is determined by the base material. It can be aluminum, it can be steel, cast iron, whatever. Also the bolt material. That will determine what torque that bolt needs to be torqued to because a grade eight bolt is stronger than let's say a grade three bolt. So it's very important you understand that the correct torque is applied given the material you're working with and the bolts you're working with. Now, a lot of the comments I got were, hey, these guys have been building engines forever and they know what it needs to be torqued to. They don't need a torque wrench. Okay, um, well, personal example here. So, been building engines for 16 years now approximately and do I still use a torque wrench? Yes, I do. A 3 8 bolt torques to about 37 foot-pounds, give or take three foot-pounds. Do I still torque them? Let's say an injector hold down bolt, that's typically a 3 8 bolt. Yes, I always torque them. Don't I know what it feels like? Yes, I do, because I've torqued lots of them with a torque wrench, but I'd like to know that what I apply is exactly what that is. I could probably tighten them and get it pretty close to 37 foot-pounds or 40 or whatever the specification is for that bolt, but I like to know what I torque is torqued, okay? Now, if you are saying these guys know what they're doing, and they do, I'm not saying that their engines exploded the second it started up, but if you've never used a torque wrench, how do you know what 40 foot-pounds feels like? Or 300 foot-pounds? Or 175 foot-pounds? If you've always just tightened a bolt, you don't know what it feels like. You need that repetition of what a properly torqued bolt setting is to be able to say, hey, that's approximately 40 or 175. And even if you can get it close, I'm sure there's plenty of guys that can. I don't trust myself enough to do that. But if you can, I would still say it's a good idea to use a torque wrench. My opinion, of course. So basically my quick rule of thumb for what I do personally is pretty much every bolt inside of the engine, internal engine bolts, gets torqued and torqued to the proper spec that I can find. If it doesn't list one, then it goes with standard torque. External bolts, a lot of them get torqued as well like the exhaust manifold, or let's say bolts that hold on something that's hard to get to, like an oil cooler or something like that. I'll torque them if I can. If it's a bracket that holds on a zip tie, it's probably not gonna get torqued. It's probably just gonna get zipped in with my little quarter inch impact and then hand tightened. And that's one thing I've done less and less over time is relied on air or electric tools to do final tightening procedures. Even if not gonna torque a bolt, I'll usually under tighten it with an electric impact and then just hand tighten it to the end. I don't trust my tools as much, even though they will put out a standard torque and you can usually tell if the battery's low or your low air pressure or something like that, but that's what I do personally. So that's pretty much my opinion on the subject. Why don't you guys tell me in the comment section what you think about bolts and whether they should be torqued or not. All right, thanks for watching.